Hi there everybody, this is Sheila. It's 2010 and I'm just about to do some um, re-recording of original cassette tapes done in 2006 when I visited briefly a place called Kirtling and then on to Carlton come Willerton. Um, I didn't investigate Kirtland enough. That's somewhere I need to go back to in the future because I did not find the main church. I did find a Roman Catholic church, but I didn't find the main one. I know I was having problems finding a church at all because um, churches do tend to be tucked away. They're not always straightforward. Um, and there's also the big house at Kirtling as well, which we are connected with via the, a Stuckville who married into the North family there. Um, I think it was it was either Edward North or Edward Stuckville. One of them married into a North person anyway. And they were quite powerful people around Suffolk. That's further back in time, of course, a long way back in time. But it's all connected. Anyway, this is me going back now to 2006. I've just left Long Melford, where we've got the Clomptons and the Peshes, where they lived, and just down the road, Clare, where we've got the De Clares. Right, so here we are. This is Sheila, 2006. I'm at a place called Kirtlin on the outskirts. I've come to a place called Our Lady and St. Philip. Um, a small pebble dash church. It's next to some whacking great big building that looks like a castle. I don't know what that is. Um, I've parked in a very... Weird way. I don't know if this is open. No. So I'm having a look around this little church. Just in case there's anything here. a bit strange walking about in this one because it's right in the middle of nowhere. I can't take any photos of it. Got a lot of people in the 1900s buried here. Sounds like it might be Roman Catholic. By the name. And it holds masses and things. It could be a private sort of place. Um, I don't really know. It's like there's like a big, big castle next to it. Not many. There's a few graves in here. There's not a lot to it. I'm having a look around a very small church. Can't get inside. in Manor or something like that. Yeah, I'm going to... This is Sheila 2010 in a minute. Yeah, I am going to play some pictures of Kirtland Manor and uh, uh, hopefully one day I might be able to go and visit that as well. All part of the research process. So there's a few graves in here. Wadnams, Kramers, Bonds, Dance, Keith Ford, Heathcott. And it, I don't know where I am. It's just like a great big mansion. Right, just turning over the tape a minute. Right, start of side two on the 29th of June 2006. I've been all over the place today. Sudbury, Long Melford, Kirtling, where I found a small sort of Roman Catholic church and, not, and a big castle-like building. I've been 
been all around the countryside, up and down little lanes, nooks and crannies. Um, I've now found Colter, and I was just determined to get to Colter, and there's a little church. I've parked up on this bank of the road. There must be a cricket batter going on. There's lots of other cars parked up as well. Um, so I'm going to go and have a look around the church now. What's this church called, I wonder? Um, I don't know what it's called yet. No name. It's got a couple of crosses on the... leaned up against a tree. Emily and Emma Phillips. Emma died July the 21st, 1916, age 35 or 85. The other one died when she was 22 in 1897. So far, there's no name for the church. But it is at Colton, near Borough Green, near Brinkley. And I managed to find it. It looks very, very derra, very, very forgotten and sad. Honest. Um, let's have a look for a few names. Christopher Mark Cole died 2002, age 22. He's got a picture of a golfer on the on the grave. Um, Hillier, that's or Hullier. It's 1942, age 76, William. Another Hallier. Died 1940, age 21. Another young one. Another Hallier. There's a lot of Halliers here. Yeah. Right, hold on a moment. Died in 1973, age 62. Another Hallier. Frederick passed away 1989, age 73. So another one, Hilda Hallier, 1991, age 76. Walter George. Died 1973, age 60. And Dorothy May, who died 1968, age 29. So there's a few of them. Obviously, I'm not. A few Graves have been uprooted. I haven't got proper shoes on for going through brambles. There is one with a leaning cross. There's lots scattered in and out of brambles. Although I say I haven't got me walking shoes on. So if there are any of ours in here, um, somebody pain, I ain't going to be able to see them. Like I said, they've had a massive clean-up job in here. It's a pity I can't get a picture of it. It's got, um, two rusty old bells. <laughs> the fact that it didn't even have a name sometimes sums up a church. A little portrait with a black door and leaded windows. Doubt if it'll be open. Oh, the porch is open. Oh, yes, it is open. St. Peter's Church, Colton. Smells very musky. Ah. Yeah, it is open. A font, an organ. Smells very unused. This, the church is apparently unrestored, although rendered. The nave and chancel are 14th and 15th century. The font is also 15th century and has two shields with symbols of the resurrection. Um, the two bells in the bell tower are pre-Reformation. A monument to Thomas Clare 
rector of the parish who died in 1793, lists his, all his children, except one, who died in infancy. The exception Charlotte died at 13 is buried beneath a stone in the floor. used very much. It's in a very poor state. Got a few plaques on the wall. The Reverend Thomas Clark, rector of this parish, who died aged 53 in 1795, and all his children, uh, by Hannah, his wife. memory to Augusta Louisa, the beloved wife of the Reverend William Samuel Parr Wilder. Um, died in 1861, age 66. And he died. No, that was his wife, I think. And then you've got Emma Grace Marianne Cosby, um, back to her, and there's a Bible open on Romans. church and there's a stone with an oak, somebody oak on it. I'm sure there's oaks that came. Family oaks. Could be Maria, I'm not sure on that. It just propped up against the wall. Somebody oak, anyway. And I know we've got oaks in this place. Can't we? Could be Thomas. Thomas Oak. Well, that's interesting. Found somebody just propped up against by the side of the wall there. As I came out of the porchway. I do revisit Carlton later on because I do find the brother of my great-great-great-grandfather, Edward Oak... I find his brother Thomas, that is that stone, and I go back a week or so later and put some flowers, um, and I also write a little message inside the church that I found him. It's almost as if he was waiting for me. Really weird. See? You never know. Hardly any graves here, and there's one, possibly a relative of ours, props up against the door. There. Need a bit of a clean up to see the dates. Yeah, Thomas Oak. I'm oh, gonna never look clean up, see if I can get a date. Thomas Oak, who died June eighth, eighteen sixty-five. Yeah, he, he was 70 years old when he died. Like I said, pure chance that I came across him. Why he was left there, I don't know. There's lots and lots of stones gone missing around here. Um, you know, so it's pure chance I got, and I knew that there was an oak somewhere linked around here. Carlton. I don't know why, but um, he could be the the last remaining one that's visible that we can see. And it's just by chance I came. I just decided to look at that stone. It's just leaning up against the side there, and 
it wasn't really readable, but I spotted the oak, which often stands out because the O often does stand out. And I cleaned it up, and uh, there's Thomas Oak there. Of course, another thing, I've got on disc the Suffolk Burial Index, which gives details of 1.2 million burials from 1538 to 1900 from the Suffolk Family History Society. Um, so I've located some places where people are buried. It's not always easy, or hasn't been easy. Even though you might know they've died, you, you, just, you don't always know where they've been buried. So this is quite an in, interesting index. Back to the original cassette of 2006. Today I have come across three names. A mason, a hassle, and an oak. Three names I've been looking for and I found, found three. I didn't find a Brooks, but uh, like I said, this is a sad little church, to be quite honest. Perhaps people don't bother coming here anymore. Don't even, you can tell by it's looked after because it's They even hold services there. The services seem to be held at Brinkley, Stretchworth in Dellingham, Wesley Waterless, Borough Green, Old Colton on 16th of July. 16th of July. <coughs> That's the next service. But, um, it's obviously not really looked after much. Sad little church, but I found it, and good job I found it then. Because who knows when that stone will be smashed up or given away. I need to uh, look up that name again. Hopefully when I get back, have a quick look. Link him up with the others. It's 18. Is it 96? Well, I can't remember the date, but I'll look it up on the census. Yeah, that is. That is interesting. Right, it's homeward bound now. There is a cricket field there. The church is next to a cricket field, surrounded by trees. It's got no big tower, nothing like that, it's just a little bell tower. And it looks forlorn, that's how I've described it. To get to a Carlton, you go through Dullingham and Brinkley. Carry on through Brinkley and you come to signpost to Carlton. Because um, I've been going all over the place trying to find it. I'm quite enjoying just driving around the countryside, um, exploring the, where all my ancestors lived and farms and all that. I'm just, it's a lovely summer's night and I'm just roaming about. It's lovely. I'm just going to leave the tape on for a minute and see if it picks anything up as I'm talking, as I'm going along. Um, They'll probably pick up the sound of the motor. I'm just going down country lanes. I'm not, I don't really know where I'm going. Like on uh, on the left, right, there's a little shack, a little wooden shack, which looks like somebody probably lives in it. Um, I've come out of Carlton. I don't know where. I don't know where I'm going yet. I might have to turn around and come back. But you see, when you explore. Um, these places, you often find, um, oh, yeah. oh, go on, go on, I think. Sorry, I was going to turn off then, uh, I'll turn around, I mean.
the front in the temperature, temperature counties. Exploring the countryside while she's got the opportunity. And um, she doesn't know where she's going, but then you see, when you don't know where you're going, you come across things. You know, you can find churches right in the middle of nowhere and things like that. I'll probably end up in Sudbury in a minute. And the signpost says Haber Hill or Haber, Haber something or other. But I, I will turn back in a minute because I think I'm going further away. But I just wanted to just go to that next signpost. So I can do a, like a round trip. You know, it's nice to do round trips, I always think. Um, but you get a lot of cars that are whizzing round here. There's one coming up behind me now. It could be a Jag or something like that. Of course, unbeknown to me at this period in time, there was a serial killer about to start his murder spree in the Suffolk countryside, mainly around Ipswich. You, can, you know, they just want to get on. at that time I mentioned Clare there totally unaware that we've got ancient ancestors there the de Clares, who were very powerful wealthy people 
um, who had influence high up, you know, and um, yeah, so as I'm rambling along there, mentioning Claire, and, but since then I've discovered a lot, and that will come on later discs. Back to 2006. Okay. 